Hi guys, welcome to the EPL review episode 11. Today it is just Arch and it is just Tom because Terps is doing something else. So you guys want to say hi? Hello. 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 Um, all right. So this week was a bit of a what um, a famous YouTuber called Rory Jennings would call a delectable medley of football. After this week, we've had Premier League and Champions League and Europa League football. Um, we're going to start off with possibly the biggest game in the Champions League knockouts. This this round of knockouts, Paris Saint Germain beating Barcelona four one in their own backyard. Um, Tom, what did you think? No, yeah, PSG just dominated, didn't they? Mbappe was obviously just class. Yeah. That third goal was just amazing. And yeah. Portugal you know, for Champions League, I think. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Can't win it with Spurs, he has to win it with PSG, just. <laughs> I mean, it's literally this complete opposite of the Spurs job, isn't it, really? Like, low expectations yeah. at Tottenham. Um, no, Can actually spend little, money. Little money, and then you go to PSG, they want you to win the Champions League, and they give you every like resource to do that. Yeah. Um, I thought they were they were great. Too. I think the only slightly weird thing was Idrissa Garner Gay. He was... He was throwing. He would got on a yellow card in like the first ten minutes, I think, or something like that, and then just started throwing challenges around. Like there was no tomorrow. I was like, man, you're gonna get sent off, but you just like did. Wilder, mate. Crazy. No, twentieth minute he got yellow carded, but yeah, yeah. Um, obviously Barcelona yeah. took the early lead with a penalty from Lionel Messi. Did you, did, would you guys think was that a penalty or not? Or I don't remember. Yeah, I think there's a trip in there, wasn't there? I, th- I think it was. People are always looking at like after the ball's come into the box. No, the trip was way earlier on when the ball was in flight. That's when they caught him, I think. And it's not... I think we've seen that so many times this year where people have been caught where the ball's coming in. They've been given a penalty. So, so many people on Twitter going, your way for loner and all that sort of stuff. But I think it genuinely was a penalty. But it is your way for as well. But that's not what I'm saying. Like It's always yeah. in Champions League. It is soft. Like There are a lot of softer fouls, I feel. Yeah. So, yeah. maybe that's, that's also why. But yeah, I think it's been like. Is there a chance for Barcelona? Obviously, they um, turned around a deficit similar to this previously. No. Um, I just. I've only got a chance. You go to compare the two Barcelona sides. They're just yeah. completely different, aren't they? Like, and the two PSG yeah. sides as well. This this Barcelona side is just so old, and they, they their transfer policy is wrong, and this is what they deserve. Yeah. Because. The fact that, that the one that always annoys me is um, they trade. What was it? They did like a transfer swap, basically. Oh, to Pjanic. For mm. Pjanic and Arthur, and Arthur's like twenty four. Pjanic's like 31, 32 now. That was weird. What the fuck? Like it doesn't make sense. You're paying for a player that's going to retire in a few years, where you've got one quality midfielder who's going to be there for years, and you're giving to a European rival. Okay, then that's that's a good idea. That it's stupid. It is stupid, but I'm just. Barcelona frustrate me so much right now because I just feel so bad for Messi because he he's caught in that situation though, isn't he? Where he wants to he he's getting paid. I'm gonna say he wants to say a lot, but he's getting paid absolute milk tons of money at Barcelona. Mm. It's something like a million quid a week all in. Oh, it's sick. more than that. It's more than that. It's even more than that. It, it's, it's ridiculous. That. Like, but he's playing with players who are so bad, so bad. Martin Brafer, mate. I, and I think he's not a leader as well. That's a, that's yeah. the main thing. I think it's, a, it's an issue as well. When he was most successful, he's, you had the Xavi leadership, you had the Puyol leadership, all that sort of stuff. And in the as well. Yeah. Like, but now you look, he, he's never a leader. He's just the captain because he's the biggest player. Like, yeah. if you look, uh, you might have seen the clip, like PK shouting at Griezmann, and they're all like argue, they're arguing a bit, but PK's the leader there. He's not the leader. Messi, when, and I, I love Messi, and he's obviously the best player, or one of the best, well, the best player I've ever watched. Yeah. Personally, but when it comes to like that big moment, or like his team's down, he's not a leader. He's a great player; he can get you out of great bad situation. But he's not the leader that will go around rounding everyone up and getting them up back into the game because that's just not who to, he is. He tends to a bit like how I class in Golo Kante when he sort of he's a leadership figure by example. Though you see his example and you go, "Damn, look at that! I've got to perform to that level." That's what I sort of associate with Messi in terms of leadership, where he tries to. He's not the shouty guy, but he'll lead by example by his great yeah. performances. Yeah, I think I think people put a lot of pressure on him, and that's why they see it as like leadership because he's dragging that team through it. Yeah, but leadership is a lot different to that because is, yeah. like John Terry didn't drag Chelsea through games or 
Like you don't look back and think stuff like that. You don't feel like you know, like Tony Adams wasn't like dragging Arsenal through games. It was like Henry or it was like Ian Wright, but Arsenal and that sort of time. Or yeah, it's like Burkham, but but it's not. They're not the leaders. They're just the quality players that should be turning up and dragging yeah. through it. They just the guy who keeps everyone in check. And I just I really want him to leave. People say yeah. what damage his legacy may just get out of there and finish your career winning a league title in England, preferably. Nah, PSG's where I go. Yeah, PSG's where I go. No one, look at mate. them wages, mate. Look at them wages. Other than Man City or PSG. That's what I'm saying. Pep Please, didn't want him. Man City. Pep didn't want him to come to Man City. He said he doesn't want to leave Barcelona. He said he doesn't want him to leave Barcelona. So. I know. Find out some oh, it's just so frustrating because, uh, uh, mate, every, like, the viewership of every Man City game would go at, through the roof. Mate, I'd go, I'd, go to, I'd go to a Man City game just to yeah. watch him. I would. But then Sky would probably go, yeah, now, although we already charge about 60 quid a month for the Premier League, we're now going to charge £150. Cause exactly, it'll be cheaper to just go watch Messi live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the whole thing in um, La Liga as well, isn't it? Pretty much to get a transfer through, you have to go through La Liga, the official league board, rather than the club itself most of the time. It's something to do that, yeah. A lot of the release courses. And La Liga sell their TV games pretty much offline on Messi as a concept. They sell their, because they have like their La Liga TV program where you buy into La Liga and you can watch all the games. Mm. They they use him as pretty much the main sales figure. If he goes, it's going to screw them over massively. The thing is though, if um if he goes at the end of the season, they won't have anything to do with it because he's going on free. Yeah. I, so, I, hope he and, I hope he does go. I hope he does go. I think Barca have to get rid of him because Barca are in a big financial issue big as well. You heard about bit. that. They're in big debt. So they need the people back in the stadium all they need to get rid of Lionel Messi so you can have millions and millions of pounds to yeah. spend on other players because otherwise you're not going to spend other players' wages you're not going to get their wages in. The thing is they have some great young talent as well. Antu Fati is a great young talent. Rui mm. Pig is a good young talent. I don't know how young Trincao is. He can't be that well, Trincao is decent though from what I've seen. There, there was that centre-back that they played as well the other day. I can't remember his name. Yeah. Of Jaro or something. Trincao's 21 exactly, yeah. See, they've got some great young players. Just need to shift out the old. Just get them yeah. gone. Sergio yeah, you got to get you... the ageing squad. Just... It is the transfer problem. It's the transfer it problem. Is, though, Pjanic, yeah. you can't have Pjanic in there. You can't buy Griezmann for 100 or million. You can't buy Usman Dembele for that money and not play him. Or not... He's constantly... oh, it's just frustrating. Dembele, though, or oh, that one chance, he literally did a flipping back pass. <laughs> He's so frustrated. Messi yeah. literally tees him up and he's like, oh yeah, I was just passing back to the goalkeeper. Don't worry, Lino. Was this against PSG? Was this against PSG? PSG. And he did it against Liverpool. I was, La- 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 was going to say, it's about um, Liverpool one. That, that was yeah. the worst. That was awful. That would have killed off the game. Yeah. They, he's done it twice now because I saw like a comparison. They're literally exactly the same chance. Yeah. And Messi has he's the same reaction that. every time. He knows, the, he knows it's just going to flip like a switch now. Because when I was watching him at Dortmund, I remember watching bits of him at Dortmund. He was he was unstoppable. He was like his passing was brilliant, his runs were brilliant, but now he just doesn't look the same player. So I don't know if that's the Barcelona effect or all the injuries. Yeah. But yeah. But still, I don't know Not how. Sure. But for 140 million, is, was that was something like that, right? Was it 140 yeah. or 120 or something? something no, it was, it was over 100. <laughs> yeah. They just that's, that's what Barcelona do. We need a player. I don't care how good they are. 100 million, 100 million. Don't they get They've wasted there. Coutinho. Yeah. No wonder you're in debt. And it shows Coutinho's not a bad player because he then went to Bayern Munich and was, although he wasn't the main part, he was still quite pivotal in their success. He was a bit part player, I'd say. Bit but but still, he played some, he had some important moments, I would say. Anyway. Yeah, he was good. He was No, but he showed his quality at times. Yeah, yeah. He scored two against Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <he's> like... <laughs> well, he did score against Barcelona in that game, let's be honest. Um, 8-2. And then obviously, the other, the other El Machador, Cristiano Ronaldo, losing with Juventus to... Porto two one. Good. The question I watched it. Have, yeah. The and uh, the, the is, passing is at the, the back is era? awful. Sorry. If you just watch it. If you watch it. There's so many. It's like it's moving the ball too slowly at the back, or it's yeah. just keeping the ball. I did see that. And like Chesney, it wasn't his fault the first goal. I'm not gonna lie. It was a bad but, pass um, back to him. What's his um name? The midfielder Bentacur. Oh what. He's just moving the ball too slowly. He's not moving it. Like he's not doing enough. He's not. His passing is just poor, and he just looked poor. And he gave away that first goal. And you just think to yourself, as soon as you do that in the first minute, you get the game's against you straight away for eighty nine minutes. You're, you're fighting an uphill battle. Yeah, I need piano back in there. The question people always ask is though, and it is with with these two, are they coming to the end of their time? And I'm not sure they are. Like, well, yeah. 
of coming towards a near end, but I still don't think they're coming towards an end end is like they're gonna retire to I don't think I think Ronaldo, you see the state the the, the man's an a, a machine. The physical mm. state he's in, he could easily play maybe not at a top level, maybe he goes somewhere maybe not Juventus, but let, I don't know, where's back Sergio? To Portugal, maybe. Back yeah, back to Portugal or something like or maybe he goes to the MLS because there's loads and loads of money there. Yeah. But he's there's more like well there is loads of money in the MLS, right? If no, no goes, that, 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 I think that's wrong. I think that he won't go to the MLS. I think he's too good for the MLS. But I think no, I'm not the dream of him. I'm talking like back three to United. years from now. I'm thinking he. I think he'll probably stay at Juventus for another two, three years. I think he'll. I think that them, them two are more than likely as soon as they're well below their peak, they'll be done. They'll just retire because they want to retire at the top. Top players want to retire at the top. Yeah, I guess. I guess. But some players want to... It depends on their mindset, because some players want to become the biggest brand they can, don't they? And be, They're already set for life, already but be are, set already for so They've already done it. Yeah, uh, maybe. But who, He's who, already done it. Both of them have. Who do you think... Oh, did you see that thing which ranked um, Tom Brady as the most... Um, oh, well, as it's such an American thing. <laughs> all Americans, right, It was like American footballers, basketball players, and all these... Like, one, like, mate, outside your country, no one That's cares. Really you know went... If, I, if you came up to England and asked me to name know. 10 American footballers, I wouldn't know... I don't know, I think I know five. I know Tom Brady. Not... The only American footballer apart from Tom Brady I know is a guy called Tony Roma. I don't think he even plays anymore. That's only because he used to play with him on Madden 26. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, I, I think I know Roma, like you say, um, Brady, and what's the one who won the... Oh, Peyton Manning. And Adele Beck- uh, Beckham Jr. But no, oh, it's ridiculous that list though. Honestly, Mr. Ronaldo like sixth and seventh. I saw somebody put in a picture of their Instagram followers. <laughs> Tom Brady's got nine mil and Messi and Ronaldo have like two hundred and fifty mil combined. Like, I can understand if they put like Tiger Woods or Floyd Mayweather towards the top, like right at the top, because yeah. they are huge. But Tom Brady, like he's nowhere outside of America. He's not big. I'm sorry, but he's just not. <laughs> he's just not. In the UK, he's just there as the guy who kisses his son on the lips. Um, and <laughs> yeah. Have you not seen that, Arch? No, I don't want to either. But I, don't want to. I think my life's better off about that. Um, anyway, who? Let, let's go into the 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 uh, what's it called? Like the debate no one actually wants to talk. Blimey. Who is who is better? Who who is who is the the goat? Is it Messi or is it Ronaldo? Tom, I've already said it, I think. Tom, you've gone with the Ronaldo hairstyle, so I'm expecting Ronaldo on. <laughs> no, <laughs> nah, it's messy, 100%. Just more technically gifted. And just yeah. a, a better overall footballer, Messi. Arch, mate, you used to... I said Messi earlier, and this is Messi. I have more respect for Ronaldo, personally, because he's got work. I feel like he's worked so hard, and he's obviously not got as much skill, like you say. So just to get to that level, to be compared to Messi shows how hard he has worked shows how much like how well he has done like he's changed if you look at Ronaldo when he first joined United he's a tricky winger who barely scored any goals yeah and he turned into like a 40-50 goal a season striker that's like that's unbelievable yeah. so yeah that's just hard work I think but like, Messi is obviously always hard but that, I, I, I think Messi's better but yeah Ronaldo's works harder I think I hate to make it the trifecta I'm also going to go for the boy um Lionel Messi edition simply because every time I every time there's a Champions League game on or whenever I don't watch Barcelona games because I'm not watching La Liga highlights or some dodgy La Liga games or some dodgy live stream, but I watch all, most Barcelona highlights and I just love watching Lionel Messi. I don't watch when I watch a lot of Barcelona games. I don't even watch the game. I just watch him. Fair enough. He's, although some of the games he does it like when they're getting battered, he's not like. Scream! He's not that type of player who goes around screaming, run, chasing around, getting the ball. But he's just so touched. Oh, it's beautiful just to watch. That's he why. moves. He, his movement is unbelievable. The way he moves, his yeah. way he's dribbling and off the ball movement. I, like it, I think there was a guy, he scored against us, and it was a game where we drew one all with them at Stanford Bridge just a few years ago, and we actually played quite well. And Willian scored for us. Oh, he, don't he just, even get me started. Yeah, so he gets the so they get the <laughs> ball and it and it looks like there's no space and then Messi just drops to the edge of the box. His classic run where he drops to the edge of the yeah, box, yeah. gets it on his left foot and shoots and hits the post and in. And I was literally, no one else could have thought that space. He just like it's like he just stood still and everyone else was moving, and yeah. then the ball just comes to him. It was it was yeah that that just shows his class really. It really does. 
they, 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 both of them, like we say, are just different animals. They are just different, mm. different. Yeah, you, I don't even compare Holland and Mbappe to them. I don't. I like when people right. are saying that, and that, that's you angering me because yeah, you can't. They're not even near the level. They're not even near it. Yeah, I wouldn't even put Holland and Mbappe on an, on a level of when I watch them. Yeah, I don't watch. Like I said, I don't watch a game for watching Haaland and Mbappé. Yeah, they probably score and stuff, but I, if I'm watching PSG, I'm not watching ha- Neymar, Mbappé, sorry. I'm watching Neymar. For me... I, That's a bit harsh. Yeah, yeah, Neymar's class, but like, I mean, like, they're, they're, I, as a team, they're amazing. Yeah, I know, they're, no, no, they're no, amazing I watch, I watch the When I watch a game, I always watch Neymar a bit like I watch Messi. It's just movement is just incredible as well, though. Especially when Neymar's dribbling, he just flows. Not as well as Messi, but I think he still flows beautifully. Whereas I think Mbappé and Haaland are more... At the moment, they're not developed. They've not. They're not reached the level, like you said. They haven't developed into the player that they're perhaps going to be yet. But the comparisons at the moment are killing me. I'd say it's on hard. I say it's hard on Haaland as well at the moment because like he is in the worst team out of the two of them. Yeah. Like, he, look at look at that that Dortmund team is struggling and it's not actually yeah. that good. They barely have any money at Dortmund. They work on a tight budget, get players in, bring players. Get players out, bring players in for cheap, and then develop them. That's how they work. Yeah. Whereas PSG has got Mbappe, and they just won three 0 against Barcelona. Great, but how many superstars have got around him? Mm. Whereas Holland, he's got Jane Sancho around him, his class, but they have to make him there. It's that sort of yeah. thing where they got like Dahoud in midfield. Who the fuck is Dahoud? <laughs> to be perfectly honest, overrated. So there you go. That's been Dortmund don't have the fun, so they just make these superstars. Like they've made the Usman debate. Christian Pulisic was fantastic at Dortmund as well, wasn't he? Abamyang was great at Dortmund. All these great players. Lewandowski, Lewandowski, yeah. Um, but when it comes to Mbappe and Haaland, who do you actually rate higher? Like, because I, I personally, I rate ha- Haaland higher. I rate Haaland oh. higher. I just, like I said, I say I don't always watch games for Haaland, but when I see him play and he's his when he's running after the ball and he he's such a great finisher. He scored a goal recently in their game. They drew two two, I think. He literally comes on his second goal, or is it? It might have been a higher score, I can't remember. But he comes onto the ball and just strokes it beautifully. And he has that variant of a pat of a. He can smash it. He's got the delicacy to tuck it away as well. I just think he's. I think if he was in the French league and in that PSG team, he is probably oh, getting yeah. like, probably say five to ten more goals than Mbappe a season because of how he is a goal. He's a goal machine. He's a powerful. He's so powerful. He's so dominant. Yeah. He's strong in the air. He's strong. He can push push off defenders. He can finish. All the time, like whenever he wants, he takes shots on. He's not scared. That's what you want a striker. Whereas That's Mbappe, and we saw that in the Champions League right lately. Before this game, everyone everyone's hyping him up now. When he was on his like nine game barren run, where he hadn't scored yeah. all through the knockout stages and getting to the final, when they need him in the final, he doesn't score and stuff like that. Yeah. Where, where's that gone now? Where's where's that talk of Mbappe gone? Because he clearly got he's clearly great now. But where was that? You weren't saying he was crap then, were you? Yeah. So. I'm not saying he's bad, I'm just saying I rate Haaland higher. Um, when it when it comes to um, I that's why I can't wait for him to play if he join if he joins Man City because he's a Man City fan, right? Or Leeds fan. Oh, is he a Leeds fan? I thought I've seen him pictures of him in Man Going City. To his dad played for Man City. Yeah. Um, but if say if he joined Man City, he, Kevin De Bruyne putting on a plate for Haaland is going to be unreal. Oh, he is he is the perfect replacement for Aguero now. Yeah, that, that that's it. You go game. City should just go game because his buyout cost isn't that much. He's he's proven in Europe and he's proven that he can go from diff- from worse leagues to better leagues. He's got transferable skills because he's just so strong and he's so just a good yeah, ball striker. Yeah, it's not striker. like he's going to get out physical in the Premier League, is it? Like no. <laughs> Tom, what go, do you go think, game. What do you think, Tom, when it comes to the Mbappe Haaland debate? I think it's Haaland just because. I think he's younger as well, and he's just scored more of like a lethal finisher than Mbappe. Yeah, I've seen Mbappe throw some. He's a great player, Mbappe, but I do see him throw away. Oh some yeah, both insane. Yeah, as well. they're both like just up there. Yeah, but they, I still, I still think they've got ceilings to get to. They're just, just below. Yeah, they're they're careful not to compare them to like Messi and Yeah, he's but... is careful not to. Anyway, let's let's transfer out of this Champions League suction hole we've been taken into for the first mm. eighteen minutes. Um, bit of a tangent, but... bit of a tangent, but let's move on. We'll try and whiz through the Premier League stuff this week because it wasn't, it was alright. Are we not? No, actually, yeah, we'll, we'll slow down particularly on one game. 
<laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's just start off. I'll go through the results real quick. So, Leicester beat Liverpool 3-1. Crystal Palace lost to Burnley 3-0. Man City beat Spurs 3-0. Brighton and Aston Villa drew 0-0. Um, thanks to a bit of great goalkeeping from Emi Martinez. Wolves beat Southampton 2-1. Man United drew with West Brom. Arsenal beat Leeds 4-2. Everton drew with Fulham, no, beat Fulham 2 0. What am I on about? Um, West Ham and Sheffield United was 3 0 to West Ham, and Chelsea beat Newcastle 2 0. All right, let's just start. Let's just cover three games because with these ones we did the predictions for Leicester versus Liverpool. Now, for me, that was Liverpool played all right for about. <laughs> I backed oh, him. Alison, I, love I you. backed him, and they, they played all right for about 60 minutes. I would say after it, when did they score? 67th minute they scored. And mm. from that, they just went down they for me. Collapsed. Like, they, yeah, they just lost it. The, the, the Allison mistake is so funny. Oh, it's great. It's you great. might want to start <laughs> that again. Hey, what, birds? <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know what you said. <laughs> um, Allison came out, take, takes out the new centre back, who people were blaming <laughs> after the game. It's like, no, what is Allison doing? It's yeah, it's like, Allison's fault, definitely. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, it just it just capitulates for him, like Archie mm. would say, like um, dry Weetabix. Misery compiler. <laughs> <laughs> Collab- yeah, the dry Weetabix. defensive um, stability of dry Weetabix, that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> Um, three goals in 10 minutes, really, for Leicester winning the game 3 1. Jamie Vardy back amongst the goal straight off the injury bench. Who Did anyone get close oh. to a correct score there, Gobbs, or is it? I put 3 2, I think. Oh, it's not a correct score there. Unlucky. What, what, said what did I put? <laughs> uh, one second, one. Just slowly. Uh, you put 1 0. 1 0. And I went for a Liverpool win because I thought they were going to win. I think Turbs went for a. Um, Leicester, Leicester. Yeah. yeah, so you're both quite close in that sort of front. But Salah's goal was nice though. Yeah. The Firmino assist for Salah's goal was was a good goal, I guess. Oh yeah, that was a really nice goal. Yeah. How many Shame goals is he on the Premier League but... season now? It must be quite a lot, right? Like fifteen, I think. He's on. He's on quite a few. Yeah, he's on, up there. He's, he's top of the league anyway. For yeah, yeah, he's on seventeen goals. Holy damn, that's seventeen. Goals. Three really? clear of anyone else, and his team. Can, on. I just fit, can I just fit in my regular segment? Yeah, go on, mate. Go on. Far away. Let's take a look at Trent. What is Trent doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, um, yeah, he commits again. Um, he can't defend. I'm gonna Trent. say it every week until it's get it's known and out there. Trent can't defend. Trent shouldn't be in the England squad, but if he, if he wants to be there, be the third choice right back because we've got better choices than that. <laughs> Liverpool. Just teach him a bit of position because he's a great player. He has every capability to be the best right, right back in the world. I believe that. Just learn to defend, to defend, because your concentration, mate, must be about as good as a play gnat. Because honestly, he seems to be just standing there, going, "Oh, this is quite nice standing here." Oh wait, there's a bloody winger there, <laughs> and he's gone, and then they score. What a surprise! Yeah, he's. he's... Hey, yeah, clip Fred. <laughs> of course, um, without Virgil van, without their solid defence and their players playing in centre back, they should be playing in midfield. They've really lacked. They've been a lot less on the front foot this year when it's come to like positioning wise, so Trent's been exposed a lot more. Whereas previously if he got exposed, say Virgil van Dijk just steps in and takes away the ball and deals with the danger, so it's not headline news. Whereas this time he's been exposed a little bit more. Anyway, um let's move on to a thing a topic I love to talk about and it's Spurs oh, losing what? once again. Fantastic. <laughs> oh my god. You're shocking. Literally oh my the the most Let's just talk about the most beautiful moment in that game, really. Edison launches a ball forward. Oh, my oh, Takes oh, it don't down me. and says, puts Davos on Sanchez to sleep. He's oh, got a short tweet and he was like, no wonder Spurs conceded three goals and the defenders <laughs> fall asleep in the box. It is so funny. <laughs> Do you know my favourite thing about that goal is? is when he falls over, Davos on Sanchez then tries to block it with his head. So he just looks like he's smacking his head against the floor. <laughs> and you look so like funny. a bloody nap, mate. You look like you turn into a fish. No, what is like, going on? That's, our defence is just shocking at the moment. Sanchez not good enough. Erdogan's too old. Mate, what the hell crap. is Dyer? 
Di- get rid of Dyer. Honestly, Dyer he's the most that. overrated player in England. And I'm not even lying. He can't defend. He can't keep the ball. He constantly. He can't run. Where he's not even playing his best position. It, we've seen his best position as defensive midfield when he has played there under Poch and stuff. Yeah. But no, we're going to keep playing him centre back because for some reason we're retarded, Jose Mourinho. People no, we need like two class centre backs. People always say that they go, "Oh, Jose doesn't have the the team he wanted." When he was at Man United, he tried to sign Eric Dyer. He tried to sign. Um, Toby Advera like three different times. He's tried to sign Kane. He has no, this he team. Them. He has some of the players he's wanted. Maybe they're not the greatest team, but he has he has the outlets he wants. He has two superstars up front, Son and Kane, and he all you need is everyone else to sit behind the ball. But yeah, they're still yeah. leaking goals. Eight in two Joe, games. But Joe, you know I thought right. that, like he needs. I don't understand why he doesn't play Lucas more. That that's my that's a big like Lucas thing for me. Logan. Is yeah. that why does no manager at Tottenham ever want to play Lucas, who's got pace and yeah. runs at people? I saw in yesterday's Europa League game, it was insane. Yeah, oh, that goal is cool. Nice. Really see Wolfsburg's C team from Australia or something. I don't. Austria. Yeah. Aust- I don't know why. Yeah, but Australia. like, <laughs> but Fred, you have to look at it. Yeah, he brings on Lamella every game, but he doesn't bring on Lucas every game. Lamella is one of the most dog shit players in the league. Nah, nah. I don't know how he's in the league still. Because no, really. honestly, if I was Tottenham, I think I've been scammed from by Roma there. Roma have got a right good job on you for how much you paid for him. Because he's awful. No, that's all right. Nah, yeah. Mate, he doesn't create enough. He doesn't score enough. He constantly falls on the floor. What does it, and he only has one foot. <laughs> that's all I've seen <laughs> from him. He scored a Rabona one time. That was quite nice, wasn't it? <laughs> that was very good. That was very nice. Against, the, against what, Dynamo Kiev or something in the Europa League? Oh. Got Martial <laughs> Is that you there? Yeah. So, we, you see what I mean? Let's you just, need to sign quality. We just need defence from the ball. Let's just take a minute though. We, we're digging into Spurs. Let's just take a minute to admire Eukai Gundogan's season. The man has 11 yeah, goals for playing like it. an attacking midfield role. He is. That touch though, well, I know we're taking the Nick Adabas and Sanchez. That touch for that goal, just to mm. pluck it out of thin air, was beautiful. And the composed finish as well. Laurie just, just, just got mugged off. Oh. <laughs> yep. Is, he's done as well. Yeah. He looks <laughs> old. I feel I do feel bad for you, Tom, because I don't like Spurs, but I it must really it is I frustrating. Every week. That they're stuck with they just stick with the same players constantly and expect the same different results. Yeah, you had like all these players for like last six, five, six years. It's been exactly. the same team. It's been the same team. Same mm. team. Yeah. Which need like actual new like backbone kind of. Yeah. So but you're not going to win anything with Ben Davis at left centre back. Maybe you'll no, go and win the League Cup ben now, and I'll look like an idiot. And that's fine if you win the League Cup with Ben Davis as left centre back. But the man, the man is past it. He's, he peaked at Euro 2018. That was three years ago. <laughs> so when, you know, World Cup, when was Euro? Euro 2016. Even sorry, five oh years God. ago. <laughs> that's that's it. I really want to let back as soon as possible. We need him. Yeah, yeah, he's good too. Ben. No he's good, good. But he's only on loan. Talk about loads. Gareth know. Bale scored two got goal and assist in the Europa League. Well, and Gareth. Yeah, it was, it was, was a nice goal. No, it was a nice, it was a nice the goal. The goal was a nice goal, but I did Actually, think the keeper the sort of was a bit stupid as well. Like it was near, like it was straight across from the keeper just stood there like that. But yeah, he did have some good power that. on it. But he yeah, needs to be performing. I know like we had this discussion the other day. He needs to be performing in bigger games than just Europa League and Cup games against Liga. Might League find out on Sunday. Well, hopefully he's rubbish when we when you got, oh you got with West Ham and you. We got Arsenal he soon. Doesn't perform in the North London derby. That'd be fantastic if he doesn't perform. Then he can perform uh, every yeah. other game after that. I don't care. North London derby, <laughs> please be rubbish. Isn't uh, it soon North London derby? Yeah, it's week after next week after that, the, next week after this week's fixtures. So I think that, that's for, sorry, but Tottenham are on a bad spell and now they've got a hard run because normally West Ham are no good, but West Ham are one of the best teams in the league. Decent. Jay Lings is scary. Yeah, I know. Jay I, Lings is looking class. That's not even a joke. He's actually good. <laughs> yeah, Kluchek is just an absolute. He's an animal. He's one of my favourite players to watch because he's just so good. He wins yeah. everything. He runs constantly. He passes the ball well. Scores goals somehow. He reminds me of a um a tip. But Jose would. I think Jose would like him as a midfielder as well. To be honest, at Spurs. He's an extra manual. He's better Jose. than Nemanja Matic in terms yeah. of his running ability. But he's like reminds me of that sort of player. But he gets forward a little bit more. Yeah. Um, all right, fine. We just covered the, the other one we predicted: Arsenal versus Leeds. Damn it! Obviously, obviously the boys getting the job done. Four 0 before we took the foot off the gas. 
Aubameyang with the hat trick. Back, uh, four. back scoring to four leads could take it back. I did think that to be honest when they started to hammer us a little bit, but um, job done. The game, it was a good game to watch. Uh, like attacking wise on both sides, I found Tony because we scored four goals, Dodge. That's why I know you're yeah. not saying otherwise, but I was, we Arsenal scored four, so I was pretty happy, and we probably could have had more. Oh, what a Ryan poet! He didn't even know it. Uh, nice, Red, nice. Um, but the the game actually play wise wasn't too complex. It was pretty much just run through, cross it, score, run through, cross it, score. And yeah, it was, but we got the job done, so we take three points over a tenth place rival. I don't know what to call it. Like, <laughs> say rival. We're in such a bad spot, but to be honest, in this league, still we're still half, pretty much half the season to go. If you can build up a run of four or five games, wins and not not losses, you're going to slide up the table, really. Mm. Um, Who you got this weekend? Um, uh, Man City. So we're not winning that Ooh. one. Uh, <laughs> I was say, if we beat Southampton, I'm pretty sure we got eight points clear. Are you? Yeah, something like that. It's crazy. It's good for us. Good for us. But then two. Three weeks ago, or two weeks ago, Arch, we were one point behind you. So we are eight points clear. Of you currently, currently no six points clear. Of you six points. Yeah, well, we don't worry about Chelsea. Um, two shots on fire. Yes, to be fair, no calendar now. Well, they haven't played anyone challenging, Tom. So you can't really say he's on fire. Spurs. Spurs aren't challenging. When we beat At- Atletico at the week uh, in the week, do you want me to say it? If then? you know, if you beat Atletico, I'll be impressed. I will. I really. Well, we're not going to be at Atletico, but you know, I can if never know. If you beat Atletico, I'll be. Massively impressed, but I think Suarez is going to have a field day. I think um, it's going to be the most boring game you're ever going to watch. Possibly. I think if well, we, the only way we'll win is if Callum Hudson Madrid. can get behind. Just imagine if Tottenham play Atletico Madrid. Simeone versus Mourinho. They would the ball just be sat in the centre circle. Yeah, no one would move. They'd all just be sat at the back, just going, "When's one of them going to attack?" No, no, we'll take it. to take it. <laughs> no one's we'll gonna play do. for the points. We'll play for the one point. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh dear. Oh. Oh, I love All right. Anyway, let's move on to next week's fixtures because this episode is already as long as ever. Um, we've got the Merseyside derby, which everyone claims is a great derby, apart from the fact Liverpool always win, and everyone goes, "Everton could do it this time," and then they don't do they it. They can't. This time. This time. They can, different. Though. This it's is different this time. It's different. Just. This is the weakest team I think Everton have probably faced to get, and a, like the most balanced Everton and Liverpool team that are probably going to come up against each other. In the last seven or eight years, I'd probably say. Recent time, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, maybe six years, because Jürgen took over six or five years ago, didn't he? I can't remember. Um, so I think that... I, I genuinely think Everton could win that, but they are miss... I think DCL may not be playing still, which is going to be a massive miss for them. Because he could Haven't bully done. their guy from Preston. Sorry, Tom. Ben Davis. It's, it's Hammers back. Yeah. Hammers should be, yeah. I think so. Right. He may not be, but I think he might be. The only thing that you could argue is if you just lost to Fulham, how are you going to beat Liverpool? It's Fulham. Fulham are, actually, to be but, fair, Fulham are the best team out of the bottom three, and they yeah. should probably. And they got. I think they got better quality than maybe Burnley, and they could probably. They should probably be staying up, but they've just been Burnley unlucky. Burnley have a sensational 2021, game. though, to be fair, looking at them. They've won so many games that. But with Liverpool versus Everton, I've seen. Like, come on, let's just go on to the predictions for the game. That's what I was going to say. Um, Tom, mate, what do you think is going to happen with that one? Or well, Mesa Derby? Yes. Um, I reckon Everton got us, got us, you know. Liverpool in poor form. I got, I got 1 0. 1 0. Alright. Yeah. Arch, mate. Um, let's go for. There's going to be goals because Liverpool can't defend. Yeah. Uh, Everton have got Jordan Pitford in goal. So, yeah. so I reckon, um, good point. Let's go for it. I reckon 2 1 Liverpool. Kabat gets his first goal. <laughs> 2 1 Liverpool. Alright. Um, this is a tricky one because I think Everton can win, but whether they will or not is although there's no fans at Anfield or whatever, and Liverpool have been rubbish at Anfield recently. I think Everton mm. may have like this little mental stigma over themselves that they just can't win Anfield because they haven't won there for so long. I think I'm going to go for a two-two, two-two draw. I think I'm going to go with a Desmond. Um, yeah. Now let's go for um, 
Arsenal versus Man City. Probably the other bigger game of the weekend. Playing on the Sunday at 4.30. Can Man City make it... I think it'd be 18 wins in a row now if they won that one. Can they do yes, it? They Tom, what do you yes. think, mate? Definitely. Yeah? I reckon Arsenal get smashed back 4-0. City are insane at that moment. Well, that's depressing. Last time yeah. we said we get battered, though, we beat Leeds 4-2. It's different opposition still, but... Well, I was going to say it's a bit yeah, different this cool. time. <laughs> Archman, what do you think? The... Uh, I'll give you 3-1. Willian comes on, scores a winner. Uh, Scott, scores a late man. one, sorry. Not a winner. Not a winner. <laughs> Not a winner. Go on. Not a winner. It's 3-1. No, you, uh, you mean, you mean the consolation goal, don't you? Three, yeah, consolation, so 3-1-2. Willian will get one. I'm an idiot. I believe in the boys. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> believe in the boys. If you don't believe in the boys, they lose. Tom did not believe last week, and that's why they lost. You must believe in the I boys. I believe one all. <laughs> yeah, that was not apprehensive. That was that was poor mental attitude. I was being realistic. EMA, Arsenal will win that game by two goals to nil. We are defensive solidarity, and we have one of the greatest youngsters in the league, other than Phil Foden, who is an excellent youngster. <laughs> nice red. One of the greatest, I said. Don't Cedric isn't the youngster. Martinelli's pretty decent, isn't he? Martinelli's on fire, correct. Martinelli is the guy. <laughs> Oh, bench warmer. Oh, he goes to keep the bench warm. <laughs> Oi, leave him alone. He's my William, friend. please, let me go on for you William, instead. <laughs> William, please, Listen, let me man, go on. I'll just, just pay William his dividends for his contract and just say, mate, just sod off. Please, just go somewhere. Oh, he's such a Chelsea legend. Yeah, he has, mate. He's, he's had big of an impact for Chelsea when he's been playing for Arsenal, I'll tell you that. Um, all right, now, this one. Is, I may enjoy this game, watching this game slightly more. Mm. Uh, West Ham versus Tottenham. Up at the Hammers. What do you think, Tom? I've got to go with Spurs win. Yeah, but he's dangerous, but he's dangerous. Um, obviously, West Ham are decent at the moment. I'll go, like, optimistically, like, 2-1. Oh, an optimistic 2-1. Jesus, Spurs are in the game, aren't they? <laughs> West Ham are decent, and we're not, so... Arch, mate, what do you think for that one? Um, I'll give you two all. Two all. Two two. Yeah, Harry Kane. Again, I'm going uh, you to back the boys. Obviously, this one was the one that produced a but, bit of the start for the downfall for Spurs when they were going for that title resurgence when Lanzini scored that screamer. Well, thanks um, reminder. Lanzini, but I'm gonna one go. Finish. I'm gonna one go one with one back one. the boys once again. Get done, Spurs. Hopefully, the Ukrainian Messi Yarmolenko. <laughs> He's going to bag a goal or two. And uh, no, this is like a guy on Twitter. Um, oh, sorry. I'm going to bag West Ham to win that one 3 1, I think. I think Tottenham will score first, sit back in their own box, and then get exposed. Surprisingly, no. Like, no. Um, yeah, that's, win, mate. that's been Premier League Review. It's a long one this week, lads. I'm sorry about I that. I wasn't just Premier League this time. Yeah, not with the Champions League. We're international in this. Well, we're European. I multicultural. Think, yeah, multi, we're not multicultural. doing the um, Copa Libertadores. Or maybe we might do the final whenever that has probably already happened. It's already happened, actually. I already know it's happened. It's already coming. We'll do next year's then. With. Sorry? Do next year's then. Yeah, we'll do next year's. We'll do next year's Copa Libertadores. Who won actually this year? Was it... Um, oh, uh, Palmeiras? Might have been Palmeiras. They've got like a, like a red and green badge. I can't remember. Um... Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and these guys are going to say bye. 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 Peace. <laughs>